Let's see, hopefully you can see this number. Oh no, okay, well, you need to look at it at an angle? Fuck it. Okay, guys, that says 264. This is 264 pound in SEMA now. I mean, you gotta think about it. This is midday, okay, guys? This is midday. This is not how, like, how much I normally weigh. I weigh in the mornings around 260 to 261. Midday, I'm around 264. And then I probably go to sleep around 265. Remember, also, as you get heavier, weight is also going to vary a lot, okay? Weight's gonna vary a lot when you're heavier. But you gotta be wondering why isn't Seema dressed in these weird large pants? Actually, that also attributed to my weight, but why am I wearing these pants? And uh, what's with the subject of this video? Well, I'm finally allowed to record stuff at Jiu Jitsu, at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu footage today. Let's get to it. What's up guys, it's Team of the Centaur and Yang here. And I'm kind of sad. I haven't been able to train this week. I've been pretty sick. <clears throat> and actually I do have some jujitsu footage for you today, so I'm gonna start it rolling over here. Um, I'm getting my butt beat by maybe a 150 or 170 pound black belt. He's probably been doing this for like 13 or 14 years. He owns his own school and it's actually, you know, I'm, I'm really, really excited about the school I'm going to right now because the teacher, Cassio Wernick, he has a lot of students but he also has a lot of students that own their own schools in the area and, um, you know, in other states that come to the school and train. So I'm really excited to be learning under someone who knows exactly what they're doing. Uh, and also, I'm really, I really like jujitsu. You know, I, it's it's something that I know I'm gonna stick with for a very long time. One of you guys, or a few of you guys, have been asking me how I balance jujitsu and lifting. I lift four times a week, and I also do jujitsu three times a week. And initially, it was very, very difficult for me to actually, you know, recover. I would have unbelievable doms. Um, delayed onset muscle soreness for those of you guys who don't know what that is. I'd have unbelievable doms the day after. I couldn't go and lift. Uh, I would be achy, I'd be sore. I had a knee injury and I actually just had recently another slight knee tweak uh, after I was able to start squatting again. So, you know, there, you know, small injuries happen here and there, but it hasn't impeded on my strength. After I was able to get used to it, um, after practicing for about a month along with lifting, now I don't really get that sore the day after jujitsu. I can go straight and lift. Um, because of I was able to repair my elbow with voodoo floss I don't have really sore elbows anymore so that's all repaired and it meshes really well I'm still be able to progress well in my strength in the gym and my um, progression in the gym and I'm still able to do well at jiu-jitsu so I think there's gonna be a really good mixture of you know strength and activity in terms of jiu-jitsu and also um, the reason why I personally chose jiu-jitsu as what I wanted to do as my next activity or as another activity rather than doing something like concentrating on powerlifting or maybe doing a lot of Olympic lifting is <clears throat> because it, it, for me, jiu-jitsu is more of a competition sport. Now, I'm not saying that powerlifting isn't a competition sport. I'm not saying that, you know, things like Olympic lifting or you know, crossfit, I'm not saying those things aren't competition sports. But I come from a background of a guy who's played soccer for 15 years. Uh, and soccer was like a main aspect of my life. And that kind of expenditure, you know, and having to compete against the other team, having to beat someone, that, that was something that I've been craving you know, since I got off the soccer field. And since I've been doing jujitsu and being being a one-on-one -on -one sport, um, I'm actually gonna probably do my first tournament within the next two months. That has actually filled that void of being something that is a real competition sport. And this, I'm not saying that bodybuilding isn't competition. I'm mainly saying that, you know, in bodybuilding, it's more of a subjective sport. You have judges that, you know, are judging you on your physique. Uh, and it's, it's not really, in my opinion, in terms of competition, it's mainly you trying to beat your body from, you know, your last year. You know, you can't change if the guy next to you has a greater muscle bellies or he's a lot bigger than you, you can't change that. You can only change the way you looked versus the way you looked before. But with jujitsu, it's human chess, you know? It, you if, if you have better technique, okay, and you're maybe a little bit more athletic, but the main thing is it comes down to technique. If you're the, the better, well-rounded athlete, 
you will beat your opponent, you know? And also, if your opponent catches you doing something wrong, he'll get you, he'll submit you in a certain way. And I love the technique aspect of it because as you can see in this video, I got my ass handed to me by a guy that weighed 70, maybe 70 pounds less than me. He tapped me literally six times five or six times within six minutes, guys. He was wrist tapping me, actually I have numbers going for when I got tapped. He wrist tapped me multiple times, it's still a little bit achy right now. Pretty sure he got my foot, pretty sure he choked me out, pretty sure he got me into arm bars. It's, it's amazing. And you know, this footage might look a little bit weird, okay? Because I know some of you are watching this, you're like, these dudes are just rolling on top of each other. <laughs> you know, like, why are you rolling on top of him? Why are you touching each other? I know some people are going to think things like that, but, you know, it, it's, it's, I really enjoy this martial art and I'm really excited for how I'm going to progress with it. And that brings me into the second part of what I'm going to talk about. Um, the, the feeling of being a student, once again, or the new, or, you know, not knowing anything. I think that I, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy you know, continuing to search for how to get better. Um, and that's something that not only, I don't feel uncomfortable being the absolute worst in the room at Jiu Jitsu, although I'm not the worst in the room anymore, I've progressed. I don't feel bad about being one of the lower ranks in the room. Just like when I go into a gym, uh, let's say I go into a, a, a like a 24 hour finish or something, and I know I'm one of the more fit individuals there. Um, I, or like when I go and train at super training, what I always, what I'm very happy about, and I feel that, you know, I can, that, that I think would help a lot of you guys too, is that I always take the student approach in the fact that I never think I'm too good, okay? Or I never think I know enough, okay? I'm, I, I'm, I don't think I'm ever, and, and I'm never, I'm never happy enough with the knowledge I have because I know there's always something I don't know or there's always someone that knows more than me that can apply that knowledge better than me. So that's why I'm always trying to find new things, go to new articles, read new things about nutrition training. Even though I know I know a lot about bodybuilding, fitness, and nutrition, I always try to seek out more because that is going to help me become a better individual. So, you know, for all of you that are trying to get better, trying to get bigger, and you think you found the pinnacle of what you can do, don't settle, you know what I mean? Do not settle because once you think, okay, I know enough, I know this, I know that, there's really not much more I can do, then you're stuck, you know, you're stuck. I'm always in the mindset that I can always figure out something different to always get me to the next level. And I think that's what's been helping me so far in all that I do in terms of, you know, fitness and in terms of just everything else in my life because I know that I'm never ever good enough or I never I, I never know enough so I'm always you know even though I'm calling I call my, <laughs> my YouTube name is the natty professor um, I always I always take a student appro approach even at super training I'm fairly confident in my form in a few things but I do not mind them giving me advice on things I should change up in my form or if they spot something in my lift I am okay with that I want that feedback because I'm always trying to get better so don't ever get you know if you have someone that you don't think has been training long enough they try to tell you something or some some your first instinct is to you know rebel and say dude chill I know enough but be open-minded to what people tell you as long as it's actual good advice and it's not bullshit be open-minded to people's advice be open again as long as it's good advice. Um, and just, just make sure to take the student approach to things sometimes. It is always good, like I do feel that I'm an expert in terms of bodybuilding and you know nutrition and that realm. I feel that I'm an expert, but I still know that I can learn a lot more, okay? Um, and that's why, like I said, take a student approach to things, always make sure you can learn more, always be out, in this, always be out trying to seek more knowledge, all right? I'm gonna cut this video off here. This is Nsim of the Centaur Eang from Break the Bar. Please comment, like, and subscribe to this channel. Let me know, comment below if you like the video, and comment below and let me know things you might want me to talk about. You guys know I always respond to my comments. Be an anomaly. And I'll talk to you all very, very soon.